You can't avoid it any longer. Your portfolio needs a project like this. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we'll look at a type of project that is quickly becoming mandatory in today's developer job market. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Okay guys, we can't avoid this any longer. Today, we're going to cover a type of project that is quickly becoming in demand in today's job market. I'm talking about an AI project. I've already had to learn a lot about working with AI as I was required to build an AI chatbot in my job last year. Now, AI was nothing that was discussed when I was hired just a few years before, but this is quickly becoming a skill that you will need in the developer job market. We're seeing most companies now think about how they can apply AI to their business and in their industry. And with that in mind, you need at least one project in your portfolio that uses AI. Today, we're going to build a simple AI chatbot with Next.js, and Vercel has made this easier than ever. I'm in VS Code. Let's start a new Next.js project. So I'll open the terminal, and from there, I'm going to type npx create-next-app at latest. Press Enter. This will start the process of creating the project. I'll say yes, proceed. We're using 14.2.2 today, it looks like. What's the project called? I'm going to call this next-chat-ai. And after that, I want TypeScript, I want ESLint, I'm going to use Tailwind, I'll use the source directory and the app router, and I do not want to customize the import alias. This is going to start our project, and then I'm going to open this next chat AI folder. So when I come back in VS Code, we'll be inside this next chat AI folder. Do the same after your project installs. And now I'm inside the next chat AI folder in VS Code. Let's open the terminal once again and install just a couple of dependencies. So I'm going to type npm i for install. And then I want the AI SDK that Vercel has. And I also want the open AI dependency because we're going to use that in the project as well. Now I'm at the docs for the Vercel AI SDK. And from there, I want to scroll down in the menu on the left-hand side to the Next.js app router. And we're going to start out with a route handler. And this is where we will connect to OpenAI and stream back a response. And they give us the route handler code here. And we can look at this more in VS Code, but we can quickly look at it here as well because we're just going to copy the code with the little icon here. So we're going to import OpenAI, and then we're going to import the OpenAI stream and streaming text response from the Vercel SDK here. And after that, we're going to use the edge runtime that is recommended by Vercel. Then you can see we're going to need an OpenAI API key, and I'll show you where to get that in just a moment. And after that, we have our route handler and the request comes in. And from that request, we get messages deconstructed here. And then we get a response as we send our request to OpenAI. And we uh, define the model we're using for the GPT model here from OpenAI. We also set stream to true and we pass in the messages. Then once we get a response, we pass that into the OpenAI stream and we get that back here and that value is the stream and then we stream a text response. Now streaming a response back allows the users to get a response faster. It doesn't wait for the full answer to be completed. So as soon as it starts generating, it streams to the browser making a much faster response. Let's scroll back up here and click the copy icon and we've copied this route handler. Let's go back to VS Code and create the route handler. I'm back in VS Code. Let's click on the source directory and then click on the app directory and inside of there we'll create a new directory named API and inside of the API directory let's create another directory named chat. And finally, inside of the chat directory, we'll create the route.ts file. Now we can just paste in that code that we had inside the docs, and this creates the route handler that we need. You can see the code a little bit better here, but I already went over it. Now I'll save that, and the only thing we really need to be concerned about now is getting our open API key. 
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Okay, back in the Vercel docs now, if you're not familiar with API keys and how they work in Next.js, I just wanna quickly go over that. We're going to create a .env.local file in our code repository, and you wanna make sure that's in the git ignore. And it is by default with your Next.js installation because you never want to send this to GitHub because it has your secrets in it. So you don't publish that to your GitHub repository. And then inside the .env.local file, you have your open API key with the equal sign and then the value that you get from open API or your open AI API key. Okay, now I'll go to the openai.com website. From here, you'll need to create a free account if you don't have one, but you may need to put a credit card on file to get an API key. I can't remember if I did or not. So here, when we click the menu over on the right-hand side, I'm going to click Login. Now, I already have an account. It's going to automatically log me in. You may need to log into your account at that time. Now, I'll click API instead of ChatGPT. And then from this API page, they have changed things from where it used to be. It used to assign API keys to users, and now it assigns them to projects. So I'll just click the top left here. I can just mouse over it, and it says Default Project. Well, here you may or may not have this, or you can create another project if you want. So create a new project, and then I'll close this once again. Now, as I'm moused over this menu, you can see I come down here to API keys, and you can see it wants me to create an API key to access the OpenAI API. So that's what you need to do for the project that you've created. In the past, I've created user API keys, but again, they have changed that. So now you'll wanna create a new API key for your project. Now we'll go back to VS Code, but I'm not going to show you my API key, but you will notice that I have a .env.local file now created. And back in VS Code, I've got the git ignore file open. It actually starts with a dot, so dot git ignore. And here you can see the .env.local or anything else that follows the env is listed inside of the git ignore. And that's why my .env.local file here is grayed out because it will not be included in my GitHub repository. And now we're back in the docs for the AI SDK and we wanna click on client components. That's what we're going to create next. And notice it also has some code here that goes in the parent server component that then has the client component inside of it. So we're going to put the code from both of these examples into our application. First, we just import that client chat component that we're going to create down here. We once again specify the runtime edge inside the server component, and that's pretty much it. Then we just return the chat component. So let's copy this code here with the copy icon once again, and go back to VS Code and update our server component first. And back in VS Code, I'm going to close the git ignore file, and then I'm going to click on the page.tsx. Now this is the default page file, the uh, server component that we get when we start our Next.js project. I'll also press Control B to hide the file tree, Alt Z so everything wraps down, but really, we don't need any of this code. So we can control A to select everything. We can hit backspace to delete it all, and then control V to just paste in that code we have from the server. But for now, let's delete this import here because we haven't created that yet. And then this chat component won't exist either. So we'll come back and add that. And for now, I'll just put an H1 and say chat. And now back in the docs once again, we need this chat component code as well. Now notice here, if you can see this, it says it's in the app slash chat.tsx file. I'm going to change that because I like to have a components directory that I keep the components in and I just wanna keep that same pattern. So I'm going to click copy here for the code and now we'll go put this inside of our component in VS Code. Back in VS Code, I'm going to click the file icon over here to show everything and then to make sure I'm in the app directory, I'm going to click it here in the file tree, create a new directory, and I'm going to call this components. And then inside of the components directory, I'm going to create a file called chat.tsx. 
going to paste all of that code in from the docs and we'll come back and review this code briefly. But then I want to, while I'm thinking about it, I want to go back to this parent server component and I want to import chat and that should come. Well, let's see what we named that. I need to go back here to the chat.tsx. I'll scroll up and it, oh, it's named my component from the docs. Let's just change that. Let's name it chat with a capital C. So we'll save that and now let's come over here and import chat. There it is and it's in the components slash chat. So now that we have that, we can change this H1 back to the chat component that we expected, save that. And now let's review the code that's inside of our chat client component. I'll press control B to once again hide the file tree so we can see it better. Now in our client component, we can see we imported a hook that is provided from the SDK called use chat. So this makes things very simple. We get the messages, input, and input change handler, and a handle submit all from the use chat hook. Now, when we get messages back, we're just going to iterate over those inside of this unordered list, and then each list item we'll have one of the chat messages. And after that, we just have our form here that has the handle submit handler. And the label says simply say something. It has an input. And of course that input is here controlled and it has the on change handler for the input. And we submit the form. That is a very simple component because this SDK has made it so easy. Now it's not going to look like much for now, but let's go ahead and start the application because we should now have an AI application so that we can chat with. So we'll say NPM run dev, start this on localhost 3000, I'll control click, and then we'll open this up in Chrome. And it's not going to look great, but we'll see what we get here once it loads. Okay, it says say something. And if I start typing, I may have a problem. Yep, I can't see the letters. And that's because on my computer, I prefer dark mode. And by default, the text is white here. And they've set the text to white inside the input too. So let's quickly go back. And if you're using dark mode, you'll need to do this too. But if not, you may not need to do this. I'm just going to come down here to the input and I'm going to put a class name here. So class name equals, and I'll put text dash black. Save that so now we can see the text inside of the input. Come back here, and yes, you can see hello now typed in there. But I'm going to actually ask ChatGPT a question. So I'll say, um, what is a hamburger? Question mark. And now you can see it uh, published the question first, and then it says AI here, and it has the answer. Again, this isn't much to look at, but it quickly answered, and notice how it answered. It streamed that answer back. So it didn't wait until it had the full answer and then just published the full answer. It streamed the answer like, kind of like it was typing a sentence. So at this point, you should really make this your own and apply your own custom UI with your own styles, but I'm going to show you mine. And now we're in a browser with my AI chat application here with the same logic underneath, but I've applied Shad CN for some buttons and styles. And if you want to learn how to do that, I have a recent video on that. I will show you now with a link. And then also I recommend applying a light and dark mode. And I also have a video for that that I can provide a link to in the description. Now let's just try this out again. And I'll say, where do hot dogs come from? We may or may not want to see that answer, but let's see what it says. So we have a, a pretty good answer and it might be a little gross for some of us. Okay, so after that we should say, where do hot dogs originate. That's probably what I should have asked that wouldn't have grossed us out quite so much. Okay, so now we're getting some uh, a longer answer on where they're from, and I believe it was from Frankfurt, Germany, if I remember right, and reading some of that before, but it doesn't say that this time. It just does say Germany, though. So notice this also scrolled down, and there's a couple of things to note about the styles here. So my questions are on the left, and then the answers are on the right, and they're also highlighted with the bold answer. And then as it answered, it automatically scrolled down. So let's look at my code to see what I added to this. Okay, we're back in VS Code, and now we're looking at my styled example of the chat component. So notice at the top here, I've got an input and a button, both coming from Shad CN components. 
I've still got that use chat hook, and then I'm using use ref and use effect. Now, what's that about? Well, the use ref and use effect are to help that window scroll down as it gets text that exceeds the window. And we want it to consistently scroll down so the users can read the new answers. So how do we do that? Well, we use a ref on the chat parent. Then inside of use effect, we have that ref here, and then we set the scroll top equal to scroll height, which is what makes it scroll down. Now something about this use effect, it doesn't have a dependency array, so it's going to run on every render. So why would we do that instead of just keep the code outside of the use effect? Well, the main reason would be the use effect makes sure that everything else has rendered first and then this code runs. So that's why I've got it there. After that, we want to scroll down and in particular, you can see my styling where I've got the form on top here. After that, in particular though, the message section, I have a ternary statement. We're mapping over the messages here. But then we're looking at the role, and if the role is user, I'm returning this list item. But if the role is not user, I'm returning this list item that has the answer. So that's pretty much the walkthrough of the code that is separate. So you can look at this, and I'll put this in the code repository that I linked to in the video description. But once again, you shouldn't just use mine. You should make it your own. And finally, back in the SDK docs for the Vercel AI SDK, and I'm going to click on why streaming under concepts because they have a nice little explanation here. And you can see this answer streams in on the right and then this one waits until it has the full answer. So you can see the difference that I've already explained. But I just want you to know this concept section is here and I'm going to be covering more AI topics as well on my channel. I think it's something everybody needs to know in the current developer market. Let me know your thoughts about working with AI in the comments. Hey guys, giving a quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and Eldad is a member at the senior level. Also, thank you to all of the junior members. You're all helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's got exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. So please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.